Koenigsegg, the company that makes very fast cars that barely anyone can spell or pronounce correctly. Jokes aside, there is much more to Koenigsegg. Having routes to world nights, cars that get sold out within the same show they were announced in, and extreme speed. Everyone knows the brand, but not everyone knows the story. But don't worry, we are here to tell you the story of Koenigsegg. And don't forget to show us some love by hitting that like and subscribe button. You don't really have to go much back in time to find the beginnings of Koenigsegg. While most other iconic car brands that we see today, like Ferrari and Lamborghini, have a rich history spanning several decades, if not a century, Koenigsegg is rather new to the scene. Christian Erland Harold von Koenigsegg was born on the 2nd of July 1972 in Stockholm, Sweden. He was born to Jesko von Koenigsegg and Britta von Koenigsegg. His father, Jesko, was the CEO of GK Energy Technik and his mother was involved in the fashion industry. Koenigsegg has roots with the royal family. His family lineage could be traced to the Swabi Germanic Roman Empire. In fact, von Koenigsegg's lineage has evidence of starting all the way from CE 1171 and his ancestors were knights. Christian used to show a deep fascination with cars even at a very young age. What contributed a lot towards his enthusiasm was that when he was just five years old, his father took him out to watch the stop-motion film The Pinchcliffe Grand Prix, which revolved around a bicycle builder who built a racing car. The movie left a lasting impression on Christian. He too wanted to make a car, and not just any car, he wanted to make the fastest car in the world. For most of us, these dreams would just come and go, but not for Christian. It was a dream that stuck with him, or rather a dream that he stuck with. It was at six years old that he laid his hands on a go-kart, and boy did he enjoy that day. To this day, he still remembers his first time driving the go-kart and calls it one of the best days of his life. Growing up, he always wanted to know how things worked, and this was a nuisance for everyone around. Cassette players, toasters, tape recorders, each and everything that caught his attention went under his hands. He was curious to know the mechanisms of these devices and just wondered if there was anything he could do to make things better. Even though it would be very inconvenient for the people around him, that wasn't the case here. In fact, they were actually very supportive of his dreams and ambitions. In 1979, his father Jesko decided to gift him a soldering kit. Christian was just seven years old at the time. Imagine a seven-year-old with a soldering kit. No one would want a seven-year-old to go near that. But what Christian did next was even more surprising. He went on to design his first radio-controlled car. His dad definitely made the right decision. As Christian grew up, he started getting his hands worked up on a lot of things, bikes, mopeds, boats, almost anything that he could get his hands on. The only thing that has changed from his childhood is that the machines he now plays around with are much bigger and costlier. Now what you are going to be hearing next could be quite surprising. Christian does not have a formal engineering degree. While one could say that many automobile founders like Henry Royce and Enzo Ferrari did not have a degree, you'd have to note that they lived nearly 100 years ago. If you are wondering what Christian actually studied, he did his high school at Danderit High School and later joined the Lundsbergs Boarding School. After that, he studied economics from the Scandinavian School of Brussels. Even though his education may not seem to have much to do with his career, it had a lot to do with his life. It was during his time at the Scandinavian School of Brussels that he met his wife Haldora von Koenigsegg. A visit to his in-laws would leave a mark on his life. His father-in-law used to own and run a flooring factory in Belgium. Just as expected, the work over there caught Christian's attention. He couldn't help but notice that the floorboards were merged to each other by applying adhesives. This made him wonder, what if you could join these floorboards without even using adhesives? The idea seemed to be quite crazy, but Christian was able to find a technique that could back this up. He had a concept in which you could use papers and scissors to combine the two floorboards. But as said before, everyone felt that it was a crazy and dumb idea. Christian was sad that his idea was rejected by many manufacturers and even his own father-in-law. But things could only get worse for Christian. Quite a few months later, Christian had to visit a flooring shop in Stockholm. When he walked into the store, he was shocked to see something very familiar. His idea was kept on a display. As soon as he got home, he opened his computer and checked online. His idea was patented and was sold for around $2 billion by a Swedish company. This could have been Christian's ticket to becoming a billionaire, but fate seemed to have different plans. Christian decided to quit college. He felt that he was young and that he had the time to take risks, and this was what he did. He realized that if he wants to follow his dream and start a car company, 
he is going to need a lot of money. He started his own business, which involved trading frozen chickens. The goods were imported from America and they were sold in Estonia. Even though this business sounds a bit bizarre, it was actually pretty successful and made a lot of money. But this was far from where his heart wanted to be. Christian decided it was time to start his own car company. And in the year 1994, he built the first Koenigsegg factory. The 12th of August 1994 marks the founding of Koenigsegg Automotive AB. Keep in mind that Christian was just 22 years old at the time. In the same year, Jacob Laffman designed the Koenigsegg badge. It was based on the Koenigsegg coat of arms, which has been in the family since the 12th century. He applied for a 1.5 million crown loan from the Swedish Board for Technological Development, which is approximately $150,000. But for the loan that he granted, they had to relocate to Angelholm. After two years, Koenigsegg showcased its first concept car. It was driven by Rickard Rydell at the Anders Storp racetrack. The next few years seemed promising for Koenigsegg. The CC prototype was showcased at the Cannes Film Festival in 1997. Engineers from Saab collaborated with Koenigsegg in relation to engine management. Volvo allowed test track and wind tunnel use in exchange for shares in Koenigsegg. In the year 1998, the IT boom propelled the development of Koenigsegg as they gained 30 shareholders in a single year. And in the same year, the first pre-series production CC8S was developed, and two years later in 2000, it was showcased at the Paris Auto Show. But the car could not be released to the public as it still had not acquired European certification. However, the year marked another milestone in Christian's life as he married his long-term partner Haldora. It was only in 2002, that is after eight years, since the inception of the company, that the first Koenigsegg car, the Koenigsegg CC8S, was delivered and it was extremely fast. In fact, it made its debut as the world's fastest production car. The same car was also named as the world's most powerful production car by the Guinness Book of World Records. Over the years to follow, Koenigsegg has produced 12 different supercar models. One after the other, the cars broke records and looked astonishing enough to break necks as well. Christian says that it is his parents, especially his father Jesko, to whom he owes everything. His father was the first chairman of the board of directors at Koenigsegg and invested much of his life's earnings into his child's dreams. And as a tribute to his father's name, he decided to name the latest Koenigsegg Jesko. Believe it or not, the car was introduced at the 2019 Geneva Motor Show and it was completely sold out before the show even ended. However, none of these cars are delivered. It is believed that this car could be the fastest production car ever, a record that is no stranger to Koenigsegg. Who would have thought that a new car manufacturer with no formal engineering background would create supercars that would compete with the Ferreras and Bugattis? Do you think the Jesko would be able to meet Koenigsegg's claims and reclaim the throne as the fastest production car? Let us know what you think in the comments below.